Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for including me in this exhibition. It's, like you said, 30 years of being over 30 years. It's nice to be in a show with where everybody else is like the same age as me <laughs> or had the same number of years behind them. So um, I really appreciate the opportunity to show my work. Uh, this is, as Dennis said, this is my work right in front of me. And um, um, they're, they started out as tunnels. I started, I've used the image of a tunnel in my work for over 30 years. Um, and it's, it's become abstract. Uh, in, in earlier work, there were much more literal, realistic depictions of tunnels. And I um, also do other kinds of, use other kinds of mediums like video. And I was making animated things that had tunnels in them. And when I was modeling the, the three-dimensional tunnels as cartoons, uh, the wireframes that I was creating to create these, these tunnels um, sort of led me to this abstract form of, of, the, of the tunnels. So those small pieces in the center are called SOTs. Those are small oval tunnel studies. Um, and now they've become more abstract, but I think of each one of them as a tunnel or a, a passageway. And for me, the, the, um, for me, the tunnel has always been sort of a metaphor or it represented the unconscious in my work or sort of s stimulates that idea in me um, and and that I don't think of the it, it's interesting that they for me that they've become abstract because uh, when they were realistic they were drawings of the structures that with a big black center um, and now they're more abstract and I think of the thing that interests me about the tunnel is the passage not the not the structure so I was really glad Dennis chose this body of work because I work in series, usually kind of abstracted landscapes with hovering forms. But these are in particular our daily news anxiety drawings that I started in 2016. And I do hundreds of them and I chose a few that I think exemplify sort of the sense of a landscape as a place where a word or a phrase can hover and it gives it that space to sort of think about um, my news anxieties. So um, the grid is sort of irregular to imply that modularity because I make hundreds and hundreds since 2016 to, uh, to deal with the stress of the, that election and then the ensuing years. But I think that this is pretty optimistic. I think of it as bookended by yes and then. So I think even though some of it seems anxious, it's, it's become um, kind of an optimism for me too. You know, it's a real honor to be in this show. And, you know, I was just talking to Randy Twaddle, who we'll probably talk to next, whose works over here. And we were reminiscing a little about um, being at University of Houston in the 90s. And he was my drawing two teacher at University of Houston. So it's really cool to be in this show. Um, I loved how hard he pushed everybody. And um, not everybody took it so well, him pushing them so hard. But I think that's what makes, I don't know, there's something about that that makes what we do I mean, it still matters. Um, so I'll just say a couple things about this piece. It's called the Island of the um Umbellifers. And it's sort of a, um, it's a, it's a version of Galveston. Um, but it has been, some parts are sort of close to Galveston and some parts are different. And the drawings on the wall create a sort of a narrative that then in the sculptural element, which in some ways, it does, it does look, at least if you look at the profile, a lot like a cruise ship. All of the elements get rearranged and the story gets retold. And all the parts that aren't in the drawings get told again in the sculpture. So the narrative is sort of completed, but you have to complete it. So I can only tell you a little bit, um, but I think it's all here, you know, it's... Um, it, it's definitely in here. And just, just if anybody's interested, now I don't expect you to do this, but the order that they sort of would go in might not be exactly like what they are on the wall, but, but on the information sheet, I think the numbers are there. So anyway, um, it's just a real, it's really nice to be uh, in this group. And thanks to Eric Schnell for outing me as being that much older than him. I appreciate that, Eric. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let me talk about the garden just for a tiny little second uh, that Dennis mentioned it. Uh, the John Ferry Garden used to be called Peckerwood Garden, but it's, it's a 39-acre botanical garden outside of Hempstead, Texas, about an hour outside of Houston. 
And the, the main reason I'm mentioning is that John Ferry was an artist. Uh, he studied in, um, in, in Pennsylvania, studied with um, Barnett Newman and Clifford Still and Robert Motherwell. So he had a serious art career. He got a job teaching in the architecture department at Texas A&M uh, as an environmental design instructor. I think he didn't want to move from Philadelphia to College Station, so he moved from Philadelphia to Houston, had, his, had a career there, showed with some people. Showed with, um, I mentioned her the other day, the, the woman that shows with you, the, probably the oldest woman that shows with you in the gallery. Pat Colville. Yeah, he used to show with Pat. I saw a flyer with them in Houston. He moved out to the garden because the commute was too long. He bought this seven acre property, started gardening, completely stopped making art for the rest of his life. The garden became his palette and he talked, or his studio. He talked about it explicitly as his new studio. So anyway, this work was not done since I've been out there. I, I've done work since I've been there, but not for show. Uh, and my work has always been, there's kind of parallel tracks of, of, of word and image art and then art that was more representational with, you know, infrastructure, a lot of telephone or utility poles and, and electrical transformers. Uh, and then two of these pieces are related to the word image, um, the, the pieces on the end, because I, the words are still there, they're just in the title and not in the drawing. So the circles in the drawing are, are representatives of the word. So if, like this is ignorant is bliss and there are three circles in there and that one is uh, add this to the list of things that work and there are an equal number of circles in that. I, I saw them, they're not maps so much as they are almost like sentence diagrams. I don't know if anybody does that anymore in school, probably not, but we used to diagram sentences, right, with those lines. And so in some ways I, I had the words in mind when I dropped the, this, this is coffee. When I dropped that coffee, I was thinking about those and then tried to kind of put the words that made sense in there. These pieces in the center are just shape-based. Uh, I've got a lot of drawings of shapes that I've never really shown. And it strikes me when I look at these that these were done by someone with an awful lot of time on their hands. <laughs> I just, uh, these were done at my dining table, you know, uh, kind of an intimate scale venture that intense and, and uh, quiet. That was Michael Henderson, Kathleen McShane, Eric Schnell, and Randy Twaddle talking about their latest exhibition along those lines on view from July 16th to October 2nd, 2022 at the Galveston Art Center.